frenzy out. Now we should just be able to go crazy. Waiting lands. Fighting our deck. I think we played land, so we're kind of That's game. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today, we're playing Historic Best of Three Ranked. Uh, now we're getting closer to the end of the season, which means I gotta put my foot on the gas, climb into Mythic as quickly as possible. And the best way that I could demonstrate that for you guys is mono red aggro. I'm calling it step on them. This is uh, everything that I used to love mixed in with everything new that I do love in one amazing deck. We have two fanatical firebrands. This has haste, it's one one. You can tap it to sacrifice it and deal one damage to any target. We have four fervent champions. First strike haste, one one. Whenever Fervent Champion attacks another attacking knight you control, gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Equip abilities, you activate the target. Fervent Champion costs three less to cast. That's not going to be deck. We also have four get two Lava Runners. As long as there are two or more instants or sorceries in your graveyard, get two Lava Runner gets plus one, plus zero, and haste. Four Shocks deal two damage. Four Light at the Stage. Exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them to the end of your next turn. Spectacle for one. Here the Critics deals three damage to any target. Spectacle for one as well. And then Wizard's Lightning deals 3 damage to any target as well. And instead of Spectacle, it just costs 2 less to cast whenever we control a wizard. We have 4 Runaway Steamkins. This is the bread and bones of the deck. Whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than 3 1-1 one -one counters on it, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Then you can remove 3 counters and add 3 mana to your pool. Also, 3 Vishnu Pyromancers. When he enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to any target player or Planeswalker, which is relevant. And of course, Bone Crusher Giant, we have Stomp. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. Whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, it's gonna deal two damage to that spell's controller. And then of course, Goblin Chain Whirl, our absolute favorite card. First strike, three, three. When he enters the battlefield, Goblin Chain Whirler deals three damage, or sorry, one damage to each opponent and each creature they control, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And of course, Two Experimental Frenzies. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library uh, as well. You also cannot play cards from your hand, and then you have to pay four to destroy it. You have 19 lands, and then let's take a look at the sideboard because we are playing best of three. We have two Red Cat Melees. This is against Mirror Matches or Gruel Matches, anything with red in it. Red Cat Melee deals four damage to any target creature or Planeswalker. Non-red permanent is dealt damage this way. Sacrifice a land, so we do not want to do that. Why we're only using it against other red decks. Ambrith Shield Breaker. This is great for getting rid of uh, the oven, which is oven destroy target artifact or even uh, maybe an artifact creature like uh, that snake that comes out with XX. It's a 2 1 for 2 also. Fry times 2. This spell can't be countered. Fry deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker that's blue or white. So that's really good against control. Lava Coil, really good against gruel or other aggro decks. Lava Coil deals 4 damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Questing Beast, this picks off as well. Tybalt, Rakish, Instigator, your opponent can't gain life, and then minus two create a 1-1 one, one Devil, that when it dies, it deals one damage to any target, so this is really good against any life gain deck. Chandra, Fire Artisan, when one or more loyalty counters are removed from Chandra, she's going to deal that much damage to any target or Planeswalker. Uh, plus one, or sorry, any target opponent or Planeswalker, you can't do it to creatures. Plus one, exile the top card of your library, you may pay, uh, play, sorry, play it this turn, and then... Exile the top seven cards of your library for minus seven, and you may play them this turn, uh, which is absolutely incredible. So when you do the minus seven, it's going to deal seven damage because you just removed seven loyalty counters from her as well, right? And then, of course, we have one Chandra Awakened Inferno. This is really good against those long control games because it's just going to seal the deal. This spell can't be countered. Plus two, each opponent gets an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep. This emblem deals one damage to you. Minus three, Chandra deals three damage to each non-elemental creature, and minus X, Chandra deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. If a permanent uh, would die this turn, exile it instead. So that's the deck. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. A couple quick reminders before we do get into today's footage. Uh, this is a competitive deck. If you're looking to see me play it live, uh, I'll be doing that for the rest of the season every morning at 6 a.m. PST. You can go ahead and follow me on Twitch there. And then if you're looking to win a Samsung Chromebook, uh, you can subscribe to us on Twitch. We're still waiting for it to come in the mail, but we're going to give out a custom Chromebook. Uh, loaded with MTG uh, content, uh, some stickers, some cases, screen protectors, uh, wallpapers, all that good stuff. 
And then uh, also if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, we're giving away half a million gems to our subscribers and you can watch a gem giveaway playlist to learn more about that. Ugh. With that all being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you had a great set of holidays and are looking forward to the new year. So enjoy, enjoy today's footage and we'll see you guys tomorrow, all right? Peace. All right, so back to uh, our bread and butter. We're playing Historic Ranked today. Obviously, this uh, matchup's a little bit off. This Platinum player here in Diamond. But let's see what we can do with it. They're playing full 100% red aggro today. I go that just volume. Pulling the appropriate lands as well, which is really nice. Let's let him ramp us. Wormfish Crusader. Uh, really, it's no harm uh, when we're an aggro deck, right? He's just pulling land. He's doing damage to himself for us, so... Really stabbing himself in the foot. Reckless Rage, however, is good, though. That's going to clear our Steam King and uh, really beef up his Legionnaire. Pyromancer's not play. Clear his Legionnaire. Feathered is very nice as well. At 12. <clears throat> Let's push for it. Damage in. Going in with our Pyromancer. Looking for a block from his feather. Ideal. Ooh! Is he sitting on... I bet he is. I bet he is. Let's go for it. Try to pull it anyways. Experience Feather. He's got the gods willing. Yeah, that's that's the line of play there. You almost have to test it though. If you're not sure in the first game. So he will have that forever. Losing our Bone Crusher Giants was really going to hurt us there. No blocks for us. Remember, we only have to get him down to 8. Or sorry, 1, so 8 damage. Trigger our light up the stage. I have two mana. Ooh, Ain Warler's quite nice. But we know he's got uh God's willing in the pocket, right? So try to aggro him out before he can kill us. that on his person. He's just draining his mana, drawing a card. He'll get these back anyways. Feathered's just such an amazing card. Get him down to three. Uh, he'll deal one damage to himself here. Takes him to two. Cast God's Willing, 
uh, immediately on his Stormfist Crusader. It's strange, because it can still do damage. It... Uh, it's like, what? It's not doing it. So he needs to do 11 damage this turn somehow. Extending his mana, digging for cards. Down to 3 mana, down to 1 mana. Sitting on 8. 2 mana, sitting on 8. We go 9, 10, 11. Yeah, he could get us. No! Oh, perfecto. Let's see how we do in game 2. I always like to view Battlefield in between our two games. We know he's playing Mardu Feathered. Kind of sucks. Spell can't be countered. Does five damage to target creature. So, uh, this is good, but he could just cast God's Willing on it. Right? So we'll maybe keep that. Take our two red cat melees. That's just anti red. Drop. Um, drop one shock. Iron Man. Chandra would be nice. Ractish for uh, if he has any life gain. There wasn't too many creatures we needed to really remove. Feathered. But again, it's almost better to ignore it and just face for the most part. We're gonna bite. We don't really have any removal, but uh, it could get us there long term. There's our first piece of removal. That's quite nice. Bring some early aggro. Hopefully, he misses his turn two drop. Pays life for it. Here. Great Horde Arcanist is so good. He could cast a shock attack and recast his shock, right? Wipe our field. Playing the Zenith Seeker. Quite interesting. Flying Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal an angel, a demon, and or a dragon card from among them. Put them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. Any order. He whiffs. My turn. No land sucks. I'll pass that up top. Trigger the steam pin. Then we are oof, I really should do this. Speaking for a land, praying for a land. If we don't get a land, this was a huge mistake. There's the land. That's perfect. We get to put that for free. And we're even playing it through the critics. That we well basically. That powers up the steam can four. Quite nice. Um I'm gonna go for it just because these guys will have haste. At a certain point as well. So we power up our steam can, and that's game two. GG, uh, the power of red reigns supreme. All right, so game one actually worked out uh, pretty good. We have a little bit of a connection in our second game up in a loss. Let's try to make up for it here. Oh, with a nice turn one, we've got plenty of draw, plenty of removal, almost too much draw. Our opponent is so choked if we get.
I believe we're sitting on some sort of bant deck. Want to ensure that we're getting our land drops for next turn. Just gonna make sure we stage. Hide. We have until time wipe at five to kill him. And we do also want to get ahead of a Teferi. You see here, so he's going to bounce a little bit. Urban Champion or a Lava Runner. Might be a bad idea. Either or, they're both pretty good one drops. You know, it's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Let's just keep going wide. Extra damage to Fairy, which sucks, but we can't afford to leave it on the field for a bit. Then we just lost our Chain Whirler, but we didn't have the land to play anyways. There's another to Fairy. He is getting the draw off the back end of this, which is supporting his line of play. Falling a little short each time, I think, here. Again, we're gonna light up the stage one more time, looking for more land because we're still at two. So, if we could drop one, that'll open up the stock again for us. So, it'll be like we play three. <laughs> no land, wow. You grab another fervent champion, which will help us though. game he can't handle it uh, and he doesn't want to can't find a sweeper so it's a weird situation we should probably take fry right probably take Chandra somehow I'm thinking take our frenzies out And throw in Fire Artisan. Inkin's pretty bad target for us, but we're going to drop a shock. We want all of his bounce targets for Teferi to be a uh, kind of less than worthwhile. So like Bone Crusher Giant, we're gonna get to re-adventure that. Chain Whirler, we're gonna get to re-whirl. It's a lot of land. We did win game one though, so I think we've got a little bit of wiggle room just to hold on to it and try our best with what we get. Another land, oh my. Probably should have went Pyromancer because he's going to Teferi Bounce. God, I imagine some sort of flash. Chemistry's in sight, that's fine. Get the damage, and he's down to 12 already. Sitting on a time wipe. Duck. Plates tapped. He enters another Pyromancer. Incan's gonna go to 4. A 
leave it on the top. Training all of our math. Volume on my phone down. Sorry about that. He is using Chemistar's Insight main phase on his turn yet again. Like I said, I find pretty interesting. I have Lethal here as a Brazen Borrower, I'm suspecting. And that is 2 and 0. Oh. We get our things back, which is good. Let's see if we can get a couple more. All right. Acer off. What's up? I hope you're looking a little bit warmer on the cold this day. We brought the heater. <laughs> okay, two lands. This is really good. This is right in the sweet spot for a red deck. Green key that we also have a steam can for our turn two. Is nice. Our opponent mulligans. Really nice. And seems to be a fervent champion. Uh, symbol coming in over his planes. That's incredibly interesting. Let's just go ahead and attack here. Ooh. Pride me. That is not good. Luckily, we do have our Bone Crusher Giant for that exact situation. That's something that you have to immediately remove. It's gonna get so far out of control, it's not even funny. Knowledge Marshall, pretty good. So, we're in a weird situation. He's down to two cards, he's gonna keep drawing. We need to just get our steam can out as soon as possible. Take the turn off, basically. And uh, let him go from there. Healer Hawk sucks because of Knowledge Marshal. And uh, Air's Ascendant also really sucks. No blocks here. Could be worse. Get the land, which is quite nice. Somehow we gotta remove this Marshal. He is out though, like basically played. But let's go in. Um, and just well, he's got no cards in his hand. Normally we'd wait and do this uh, main phase, but we're just gonna get rid of it right now. And then, uh, hmm. Maybe no attacks right now. We'll take the turn off and see what uh, see what he pulls here. Hopefully, it's just a land. Another Sierra Ascendant. I'm gonna let him go in here for free. no blocks. We're down to ten. Doing a really good job aggro wise. Buffs everybody up a little bit. Just go wider than he can. He can double block if he wants to kill it, right? We're wide enough that we have uh, a pretty good advantage. So he's just going to take it. He's really looking for an unbreakable formation, uh, stuff like this. The land, be okay.
We have the kill here with our Bone Crusher Giant on anything that he does. Let's take our Steamkin down. Master our Legend Stage. It's our other Steamkin to four. Great. This is basically game because we get to Chain Whirl after we Wizard Lightning his Marshal to wipe the field. So, playing Mono White. You almost might want to leave it. We're gonna gain life so we could put in our instigator. Drop Pyromancer. Firebrand. Right. Kind of screwing with our curve a little bit, but uh you need Frenzy, just for that card advantage, if we can get it going. We must have played first in game one. There's no way we won that second. We can find a Chain Whirler off the start. Oh my gosh. We definitely have to toss this. <clears throat> We're going to keep this. We're going to toss our Pyromancer. Two Bone Crusher Giants should probably save us, uh, especially when combined with a Shock. Yeah, we're gonna go for it. We could hold and defend so we can't gain that life back. Probably the better thing. But we don't mind if he taps it. Ugh. That really. Just give him a big old oops, like we, uh, world's biggest mistake. Which we basically did. We can resolve this. We can resolve this as well. No one's attacked. Um, this will actually gain him life. Well, big time screwed the pooch here because he goes to five. Here's the pooch uh, that we've so screwed. <sighs> We could have killed them before. Oh, blocks. Let's just scoop up. He has so many things with life gain, it's not even funny. Right? Could have got an extra kill because we forgot to cast on our turn as well. So this match is riddled with mistakes, you guys. At least he pulled the land. And at least we get to pick off. Right? Still getting hit for six. Johnny now six as well, which is too much for us to handle. I don't know what's gonna do it for us. Definitely not a steam can. Steamkin, Bone Crusher Giant, uh, I guess is the play. Skipping the turn. And again, we're so low in health that it's not going to happen. So let's go ahead and scoop. We know what we did wrong. You guys got to see here first. Luckily, we won game one. Uh, I'm going to drop to Bolt, actually. Really want to take a Chandra. We could take it to both. One and one instead of two. We probably should have kept both because 
if he doesn't gain life, then Johnny's not going to click up as well. But at the same time, I just want a little bit more aggro on the field if we need later on. We're going to play first. We have a turn three chain whirler. This should be totally fine, you guys. Basically brutal is whenever uh, another creature enters battlefield, you gain one life, which includes my creature. So we definitely should have run multiple bolts. Wow! Really need to avoid avoid a Johnny. Luckily for us, get the big boy sweeper here, cleaning up the field. He's gaining so much life from that; it's not even fun. That attack and we do have our steamkin we've got a frenzy this is all right for us you guys Nosh marshall we're just gonna main phase that Oh, sorry, Lab Runner out. Just put our four. Nice big attack in. Kind of wiling out a little bit. Now we're going to light up the stage. Two spare mana. Hoping for some one drops. We get them. Put our Pyromancer out. Not only does it use most of our mana, but it's going to have Summoning Sickness uh, because it doesn't have haste. Great. Marshall, save that game, you guys. Goes to four, tap it, throw our frenzy out. And now we should just be able to go crazy. Waiting lands, fighting our deck. I think we played a land, so we're kind of. That's game. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed historic mono red. Uh, I know it's one of my favorite archetypes my strongly played archetypes but let me know what deck you seem to do the best with uh i'd love to know maybe try some new things right uh we're back after christmas now it's boxing day i hope you guys all had a really great set of holidays and uh are getting some rest uh, between christmas and the new year because i know people are gonna get lit again for that and so i know i've been just uh counting my blessings taking some rest and uh getting a lot of magic time in so before we call it quits for the day, make sure to follow us on Twitch. We're live every morning, 6 a.m. PST. And then check us out on YouTube. If you subscribe to Twitch, you can be entered into win Samsung Chromebook. And if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you're going to be entered into win half a million gems. You can learn more about that by digging around on the YouTube channel. Search gem giveaway to learn more. That all being said, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to playing with you all tomorrow. Peace.